My name is Jill Hines. I'm co-director of Health Freedom Louisiana. We are a consumer and human rights advocacy organization. Um, are my slides up? Thank you guys for being so patient with all of our technical difficulties. Zooming in a physician from Canada has been quite a challenge, so thank you for hanging with us. Those are the good guys. Mm -hmm. And then the other bill that Danny is referring to, we called it the 
copy paste bill because you literally had to copy paste one section of law where it was already in law and put it in the other section of law where it needs to be so that parents could be informed of their rights and it only got three votes. Three votes. So very disappointing, but so um, courageous of you to carry those bills. I think our, our legislature is afraid of being deemed anti-vaccine, but at this choice, at this point in the road, we need to be pro-freedom right. and anti-mandate. <laughs> at this point, that's what we need to do. We're talking about RS 17170, specifically Section E. RS stands for Revised Statute, meaning this is in law. And in this case, Louisiana is number one. We're last in everything, but in this instance, Louisiana has the best exemption law in the country, something to be proud of. We really respect parental rights when it comes to what is best for your child. You get to make that decision. So RS 17 170 Section E allows you the opportunity to choose which vaccinations are appropriate for your child. So um, which students does it cover? All of them. All of them. From preschool, daycare, um, Mother's Day out if it's more than 24 hours a week, all the way through residency if your son or daughter is going to be a doctor through um, clinicals if they're in nursing school. If they're a student in a college in, or university in Louisiana, they are covered by 17170B. <laughs> what does it say? It says that any person um, that enters the school may exempt from the necessary requirements to be vaccinated. So any requirement that a school has for vaccination requirements, you, you can exempt from them. Provisions of uh, 17170. The state law provides, uh, provides protection for our children against a vaccine mandate, uh, like the ones that our employees are experiencing right now. Uh, schools cannot decide if an exemption is valid or not. They have to accept an exemption. And no explanation is needed Written dissent is all that's required. Your, uh, an explanation of your religious beliefs or philosophical explanation is not necessary. So on October 14th of this year, I sent a letter to Dr. Courtney Phillips, who's the Secretary of Health with the Louisiana De Department of Health. And in my 14-page letter, I explained to her that uh, the current uh, university and college and university policies that are taking place right now violate that state law in four different ways. The first issue is that the state law allows for a student to submit evidence of prior immunity. What is one thing that has been noticeably excluded from, from students is them allowing um, students to provide evidence of prior immunity, an antibody test, a titer test. They have excluded that. That violates state law. So while the statute provides that colleges and universities may require immunizations or proof of immunity more extensive than required by the, the schedule approved by the Office of Public Health, it does not say that they can accept anything less. And so to date, Louisiana colleges and universities have excluded evidence of immunity to SARS-CoV-2. Second is the issue of vaccine preventable diseases. Is COVID-19 vaccine preventable? No. Well, based on recent CDC data, vaccinated people who do get infected have just as much virus in their system as unvaccinated people, meaning they can likely spread the virus simply because of the power of the Delta variant. And that, of course, is a quote from our governor from August 2nd, the day that he implemented the mask mandate in the state. So if vaccinated people can transmit and be infected by SARS-CoV-2, and if vaccinated individuals can have as much virus in their bodies 
as an unvaccinated individual, then COVID-19 is not a vaccine preventable disease. In my letter, I included 10 studies to corroborate that. Third, what is the consequence, the consequence of submitting an exemption? State statutes, um, the statute states rather that unvaccinated might be excluded in the event of an outbreak of a vaccine preventable disease. Now remember, COVID-19 does not apply because it's not a vaccine preventable disease. And further, the only people who should remain on campus are those who are recovered because they are immunized. Yeah. What about masking and testing? No. <laughs> because statute specifies what might happen if you submit an exemption, it leaves nothing to the imagination or machinations of LDH. The Department of Health can only approve stricter admissions requirements, not consequences. Additional testing and masking of unvaccinated people violates this statute, as well as RS, Revised Statute 40, 1159.7, which states, nothing contained herein shall be construed to abridge any right of a person 18 years of age or over to refuse to consent to medical or surgical treatment as his own person, as well as Louisiana Constitution, Article 1, Section 5, which states that every person shall be secure in his person, property, communications, houses, papers and effects against unreasonable searches seizures and invasions of privacy. And finally, RS 29736D states that even while under a declared public health emergency, nothing in the chapter on emergency powers shall be interpreted to diminish the rights guaranteed to all persons under the Declaration of Rights of the Louisiana Constitution or the Bill of Rights of the United States Constitution. This is important here. This chapter shall not violate Article 2, which is the distribution of powers, meaning the governor cannot make law. The mask mandate is not law. I concluded my letter to Dr. Phillips with this. The race to vaccinate Louisiana College and University students created chaos for students and parents who reached out to Health Freedom Louisiana. Letters and emails to students from universities excluded vital information regarding available exemptions and included burdensome and discriminatory testing and masking policies for those who did not comply. Unethical incentives like lotteries um, and direct payments, as well as limitations on freedom of movement and exclusion from Greek life and athletic events were used to coerce students into getting this invasive medical procedure. There are serious human rights violations that need to be addressed. Coercion has no place in medicine or public health. History has taught us this valuable lesson, and yet despite um, universal treaties dedicated to medical ethics, the greater good argument was used to violate the God-given right of every Louisiana citizen to receive free and informed consent for an invasive medical procedure. The, approve, uh, the approval granted by LDH for colleges and universities to require COVID-19 vaccination for school attendance needs to be rescinded as COVID-19 does not fit the definition of a vaccine preventable disease discriminatory practices based upon COVID-19 vaccination status needs to end immediately. Students and parents need to be provided with accurate information on the risks associated with SARS-CoV-2 infection by age group in comparison to the risk associated with COVID-19 vaccination by age group. Vaccination, like any other medical procedure, should be an individual choice with no societal or political pressure. And that's why 
it's so important that you know your rights and protect your freedom. Thank you guys. do a little introduction of, of Woody. Um, I call Woody one of my COVID silver linings. Um, he's one of the best, one of the best things that's happened during um, this COVID madness. So I got to meet him. I was quoting him before I ever knew him or knew who he was. Um, Article 1, Section 1 of the state's constitution is one of my favorite things to quote. Do you guys know Article 1, Section 1 of the state's constitution? It actually tells us what the origin and purpose of government is. It defines it in, in our state's constitution. And that is to protect the rights of the individual. And Woody wrote that. So Woody was the longest standing member in the Louisiana State Legis Legislature. He served in the House of Representatives for 28 years. And during that time, he helped draft the new Louisiana Constitution in 1974. So many of those statutes that I just read to you guys, Woody wrote. So it was such an honor when I finally got to meet him. I was kind of doing a fangirl. You know, most people <laughs> have like rock stars or you know famous people that they like to follow, movie stars or whatever. I collect scientists and legislators. <laughs> 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 They're some of my favorite people. So it's 